All right, welcome back. In this video, we're going to talk about two loaders for Webpack, file loader and HTML loader, as well as a nice plugin called Clean Webpack Plugin. So we're going to start with the loaders. Right now we have this image that isn't really working. Well, it's not working at all. And actually the reason it's not working right now is because my path is incorrect. Originally we had our index HTML file right here on this level and the file, it, the image is assets slash webpack.svg. So the path was just dot slash assets slash webpack.svg. And I copied this whole thing into my template, but now my template is inside of the source directory. So what I could do is just change it to be dot dot slash assets. As you can see, this should work. If I rebuild one more time, my index.html in the dist folder is now linking to dot dot slash assets. So this does technically work, but this is really not a good way of doing things for a couple reasons. One is that we are hard coding this path in and it relies on assets being in a sort of a sibling folder, being in the same folder as dist. The dist folder is supposed to just contain everything we need. It's supposed to be, uh, you know, the, the build of our app. It should have everything we need contained in this folder. So the fact that our assets is on its own and we just happen to link to it correctly is not ideal. So what we're going to do is set it up so that my assets are actually copied into this folder and we'll, we'll work on hashing them uh, for cache busting so they'll have new names, sort of like our bundles down here. And the links are going to be dynamic. The source in our image will be dynamic. So there's a couple things we need to do. The first thing I'm gonna do is move my assets into source. So source will have an assets directory. We'll reference it in here. Webpack will then take those assets, copy them over to dist into a new folder, and then we'll link to them and it will be sort of magic. Okay, so I just moved the assets folder and then the path now needs to change in my template. So my template is in the same folder. So it's dot slash assets slash webpack dot SVG. Okay, so that works, uh, but then we're gonna have the problem when I run npm run build and I open index, it's looking for dot slash assets, but there is no assets folder in dist. So we're back to our same error or issue before. So we're gonna do two things, two loaders to help us. And the first one is called HTML loader. And I have the docs open for it here on GitHub. What it will do is replace, well, anytime it encounters a source for an image, it will require that image. It will tell Webpack, hey, here's a file that we're, we need to load. I need you to t you know figure out what to do with it. And then we'll have to tell Webpack how to handle those files like we had to do with a CSS file or an SCSS file but instead we'll tell it how to handle JPEGs and PNGs. But we're gonna start with the HTML loader. So it's pretty straightforward, npm install dash dash save dev HTML loader. And while that's going, in our webpack.common, because this is common across all of it, we're going to add another rule where the test will be for .html at the end of a file name. And then we're going to use HTML loader just like that. We don't really have to configure very much. This is fine on its own. So what happens is that we're using this template.html. It's being required, essentially. Webpack is going to encounter this, and because we have this new loader we just added in that says, hey, if it ends with HTML, let me take charge of it, use HTML loader. So then that's gonna come across this source, and it's going to require this image in JavaScript. And then Webpack is gonna freak out because it doesn't know what to do. So I'm going to show you that right now. If I do npm run build, we're going to get an error. Here we go. So what happens is it comes across this SVG right here because it was imported and it says, I don't know what to do. Module parse failed. Unexpected token. You may need an appropriate loader to handle this file type. And indeed we do. So we're requiring any images in our template now. They are being required, imported into JavaScript, but now Webpack doesn't know how to handle them. So this is where file loader comes in. So this will help us actually load those SVGs or PNGs or JPEGs. So we're gonna begin by installing it. So npm install dash dash save dev file loader. And while that's going, we can add a new rule. And this one, the test is going to be a bit different. I'm gonna copy this, but instead of .html and instead of just hard coding .svg, I'm gonna give it a couple of options. So SVG, or PNG, 
or let's see, JPEG or GIF for now, or GIF, however you pronounce it. So in a regular expression, this is or, so any of these will match as long as there's a period and then one of these choices and then a dollar sign, which signifies the end of the line. So it's dot SVG and nothing else, dot PNG and nothing else. And then instead of just doing use and then passing in file loader, I'm gonna actually use a different syntax here where use is an object and we tell it the name of the loader, file loader, and then we pass in some options. And the reason I'm doing these options is that I can specify things like the name of each file will begin with something simple, name.ext. So remember, HTML loader is importing this asset and JavaScript Webpack doesn't know what to do with it, but now we have this loader and we're telling it, you should make a copy of this, move it over into the dist folder with this name. So whatever the file name is, dot the extension. But I'm also gonna add in the hash just to show you that we can do that and it's not as far as i know it's not content hash like it is up here uh where is that in production it's hash maybe both will work but this is what i've seen in the docs and then i'm going to give it a output path and this is where our assets will go so i could call it images just to show you uh, that we can do something different and now inside of our dist folder if i close node modules down when we run this Webpack is going to encounter this image because the HTML loader encounters it inside of our template because we used a source. It imports it and this loader is triggered right here where we have SVG, that's matching. So then it copies it over into a new folder called images in our dist and the name is going to be webpack.svg with a hash in the middle. Okay, let's see if it works. So we're gonna run npm run build. And it looks good so far. Inside of dist, we have a new images folder. Notice the file name, it's really long. Webpack.contenthash.svg. And the best part, if everything works, our index HTML now has image with the source set to that. It's no longer set to what it was before, assets slash whatever.svg. It is dynamically linking to the correct image. So now if I added another image into the assets folder, whatever I added in there, if it was SVG or PNG or JPEG, and then I used it in my HTML template, I, I used image source equals something, it would be required, it would be loaded, copied over with a new name, there's other things we can do as well, like setting uh, compression on our images, but I'm gonna keep it simple. So we are now loading the files correctly. And if we go refresh the page, we see the image. And if we use our live server, it also should work just fine. And it does. Okay, so now moving on to the plugin I mentioned, the clean Webpack plugin. You might not notice this yet, but if I go and make some changes to some of my code, let's say I go back to index.js and I add another console.log. It doesn't matter what it is console.log j, I meant to type high, but I mistyped. If I build again, npm run build, what happens is that we end up with another bundle. And every time we build, if the code changes, we get a new JS file. And we only use one of them. Our index only links to one of them each time. So we'll quickly install a plugin called clean webpack plugin, which will delete the disk directory every time we build, and then we'll have a clean slate to add our code into, or for Webpack to do it. So to install the plugin, it's npm install dash dash save clean webpack, or clean dash webpack dash plugin. And while that's going, let's go back to our webpack.common, although we actually only need to use this in production. When we're using the dev server, it doesn't matter because those files are in memory. When we stop the server, they go away. In production, it's actually exporting, it's, it's building the dist folder and making those files. So I'm going to import a clean webpack plugin equals require, and then it's just clean webpack plugin. Okay, now I can pass in plugins here, like we have over in uh, common.js where we're doing this HTML webpack plugin, can do the same thing, 
but this time it's new clean webpack plugin just like that so right now every time we build if we change our javascript or css or any of our code we end up with a new bundle file and that's just going to keep going until we delete them but now with clean webpack every time i run npm run build assuming i didn't have a typo we'll see that it is cleaned up and we only have one file so everything that was there is either it's deleted and rebuilt or if it's not being used if it was left over from the last build it's abandoned it's completely removed and again we only need that in production it wouldn't hurt to add it to common or to dev but in dev our files are using the dev server and they're just uh, in in memory temporarily they're not actually written down they're not saved to the system all right so we saw two things here file loader with html loader to get our assets into a new directory and have the links work correctly and then also we saw how to quickly add into production the clean webpack plugin all right so i'm going to commit now and uh that's it for this video i'll see you in the next one if you enjoyed this video my cat and i really appreciate it if you share it with anyone you think would get something out of it uh leave a comment subscribe please turn on notifications oh so annoying asking you to do that Anyway, uh, have a good day, and I'll see you in the next video. All right, thanks.